is the thrilling conclusion to my film festival series within a series. I flew to Los Angeles the first weekend in November for AFI Fest and got to spend quality time with my agent and several of my dear author friends and of course enjoyed plenty of yummy vegan food. I arrived late Thursday night and took it easy during the day on Friday. Bed yoga is my favorite thing on short trips when I can't pack my mat unless I want to pay for a checked bag, which I do not. For breakfast, I got a deluxe avocado toast and a dirty chai from a coffee shop around the corner called Bohemian House of Espresso and Chai with a very friendly proprietor who has written this neat little book of conversation starters. This question is my favorite because I've been thinking about this a lot as I draft my time travel novel. And since we're on the topic of time travel, I also went to the last bookstore, which definitely lives up to its reputation, although my favorite part was finding Liz Houston's shop upstairs. Friday evening, I took the Metro to Hollywood for drinks with my agent, Kate, and another client of hers, Elizabeth Little. Elizabeth is someone I've always had warm feelings for, as if we actually knew one another. And not only because her husband once wanted to adapt Mary Modern, or because Dear Daughter is pretty much my favorite thriller, it was so lovely to finally meet Elizabeth and hear about the novel she's working on now. On my way to the bar, I had spotted a vegan Japanese restaurant called Plant Lab, so I retraced my steps and popped in there for dinner. Far and away, my favorite meal of this trip. The eggplant tempura was out of this world, as my grandmother used to say. The next day, I was meeting up with Henry Lien for lunch, so I got myself gussied up early because I knew he'd appreciate my outfit. Here are the full details on the pantsuit. It is made of cotton sateen, which feels simultaneously sturdy and luxurious. The chain stitching is cotton, and it was designed by Kelly Hogeboom, who is a vegan non-binary designer based in Washington State. It fits like a glove because they had me take my measurements over Zoom and sent me a muslin to which we made adjustments using safety pins. This is the first custom clothing I have ever owned, certainly the most special item in my wardrobe, and now I just have to create more occasions to wear it. The design on the back is a gender neutral paraphrase of Taylor's lines in the slaughterhouse scene, and it was chain stitched by Kelly using a graphic design by Veronica Kolinska, who coincidentally is one of the artists featured in Bright Clean Mind. Kelly also made me a matching clutch, to which I added every vegan button I own. Check out the notes below this video for Kelly and Veronica's links. And Steve found these amazing glittery Mary Janes for me to wear with the pantsuit. I think of them as my Glinda shoes. Anyway, Henry and I had a wonderful time over lunch at a regular Japanese restaurant. We asked for everything on the menu that was vegan, and afterwards we recorded a little chat about Henry's magic refrigerator, so if you haven't watched that one yet, you will see it linked above and below. Then Kate and I met up for our long-awaited Bones and All celebratory dinner at another vegan Japanese restaurant called Shojin. To be totally candid here, I might have enjoyed the food more had I not had that absolutely perfect meal at Plant Lab the night before. The cocktails were terrific, however, and the staff were very kind and attentive. Then we hopped into a lift to get to the TCL Chinese Theater, where we met up with Mackenzie Lee and Kendall Culper, who are two of my dear pals from the Boston YA and Kidlet community. Check out their many wonderful novels. Links are below. Mackenzie recently moved to LA, and Kendall was already planning to visit her that week, so it was very serendipitous that Kendall was there and that I could manage a plus two. Then in for the screening, that was my fifth time, and I got to meet Simone, who runs Club Chalamet on social media. Here was my favorite part of the q and I loved, of course, the scene where, where Michael reveals that his friend is not genetically uh, afflicted with this right. cannibalism and your horror at that. That's a wonderful, powerful scene, isn't it? That, that that policeman is just there for the ride, so to speak. And you're his, <laughs> and you're his friend, Michael. And I believed it. <laughs> I believed you were a friend. Was how did you do that? Behavior. It's all in the behavior. <laughs> um, why just observing other people? Uh, it's in. It's in. I think Michael wrote you. Can I say it? What? Michael sent me and Dave something like a hundred questions. <laughs> more, probably more than a hundred. <laughs> in preparation of the character, which were all incredibly inspiring questions. 
<laughs> oh, and I passed this letter from my friend Meg on to Dave, who sent her the most wonderful email in reply, telling her interesting tidbits about the production that I hadn't known about. If you're thinking about writing to an artist you admire, I say do it because, speaking for myself at least, emails from readers always make my day. Afterwards, Kate and I went to the after party at the Sunset Tower Hotel, which has this very elegant yet comfortable old Hollywood vibe. You may have noticed that I don't take that much video in the moment. My philosophy is I can either document the moment or I can live it. I can't do both. So 95% of the time, I just choose to enjoy myself, fully inhabit the present moment, and just tell you about it afterwards. I hadn't seen Kate in person in something like four years, maybe more than four years, and all I wanted was to settle in with a glass of bubbly to celebrate our triumph and just enjoy some real talk, which there just isn't time for during the workday and wouldn't be the same over Zoom anyhow. Kate and I have been working together since mid-2004, which means that this relationship has lasted a lot longer than a lot of marriages. <laughs> and she has always, always had my back. When I was delivering manuscripts that nobody wanted to buy, I was out of print, I was making her no money, she still treated me like an A-list client. And frankly, she's the reason I have advised several colleagues to seek other representation, my logic being, you deserve to have a literary agent who cares as much about you, not just your work, but you, your well-being as much as mine cares about mine. I'm not saying your agent has to be willing and able to bail you out of jail, but it is a nice bonus. And may I never have to take her up on that. All this is to say that I had the chance to meet Michael Stuhlbarg, who is my aunt's absolute favorite actor in the whole world. And I let it pass me by because I just wanted to spend quality time with the number one person who has made my career what it is today. The next day, Mackenzie and Kendall and Queenie picked me up and we went to this enormous Sunday flea market called the Melrose Trading Post. Lunch, first things first, these samosas and watermelon juice hit the spot. And then we ambled around, browsing for a couple hours. I was a little bit obsessed with this iced tea stand. Expensive and worth every cent. Look at all of these wonderful plants. I can't take home with me. <laughs> My friends got me this pin, which was very kind of them. Although as I've said, or at least implied, I actually do much prefer Dave's version of the story. So it has been a little bit surprising how many of my friends, my very loyal friends, have told me that they loved the movie and also loved my book even more. All right. <laughs> Yay! Anyway, thank you so much, Kendall and Mackenzie. It has been such a joy getting to share this experience with you, especially since you were both at the book launch all the way back in 2015. Later that afternoon, we did a bit of foodieing in Larchmont. I got a gluten free bagel at Baby Cakes, or rather, the vegan gluten-free bakery formerly known as Baby Cakes, and it was surprisingly delicious. I may have enjoyed it even more than a gluten-full bagel. And we chilled at Mackenzie's apartment for a bit where I got some excellent holiday book recommendations for the little ones in my life. But alas, all fun times must eventually come to a close, so I had to say my goodbyes and make my way back to the airport. I took a red eye, so by the time I made my way to my gate, my vegan dining options were slim to nil, which is pretty strange given that this is the Los Angeles airport, right? The only thing I could find was this yummy curried cauliflower salad in the fridge at a cafe that had just closed. But fortunately, after a bit of back and forth, the person behind the counter agreed to ring me up. I mention this because it is an important skill I found um, as a vegan, a muscle that must be developed in politely nudging for what you need. I did not act entitled about it. I thanked her profusely, but because I didn't give up and say, oh, it's closed, I can't have that salad, I got a square meal that I wouldn't have otherwise have had. And the other thing is, you know, that salad might have ended up in the dumpster. And that concludes my film festival whirlwind. 
Thank you so much to Kate and Elizabeth and Henry and Kendall and Mackenzie and Teresa for arranging for my screening tickets for me and my friends. And thank you to MGM for facilitating such a fantastic weekend. And thanks to you for watching this video. Just pretend you're a drag queen. <laughs> they, they've got confidence, right? Yes. They have yes. to.